Good evening, everybody. I think you're getting started. Um, welcome, welcome everybody to Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimò. Uh, my name is Eugenio Refini. I'm the chair of the Department of Italian Studies. And on behalf of Casa Italiana and the Department of Italian Studies, I'm really delighted to welcome you all tonight for our second event in the Black Italy series, which we started a few weeks ago. This is a new series, but kind of an ongoing conversation, uh, sort of developing out of previous projects which Casa Italiana sponsored in the past few years. Um, the idea is to really broaden up the conversation about what blackness means uh, in Italian culture and history in a very broad trans-historical um, sense, and also in a trans-geographical sense. And uh, tonight, we are kind of sort of bringing together two events which were meant to be happening in different days, but as you all know, Tuesday was a snow day and uh, we were all home instead of being here together. So um, we will begin with what's supposed, what was supposed to be happening on Tuesday, which is a conversation discussion with a fantastic panel of speakers, um, and then we will move on to uh, a performance, which was supposed to be happening tonight. So I think the, the, the evening will be a little longer than expected initially, but uh, certainly even more uh, interesting in many ways. Uh, I will keep my introduction super short because I want to leave uh, the floor to our fantastic speakers. Our panel discussion is entitled uh, Contemporary Theatre by Italians of African Descent, The Playwrights, the stories and the challenges. And uh, the panel um, features um, five speakers, uh, so I will just uh, follow the order which I have here on my, on my screen. Uh, playwright Nalini Vidula Mutusami, um, who's the author of The Foreigner's Smile, and uh, we will get to know her and her work more tonight. Um, then we have Margherita Laera, who's a translator based at the University of Kent. Um, Elena Bellina, a colleague here from our department at NYU. Uh, Isabella Livorni, another colleague here from the department. Um, and finally, Laura Caparotti, the artistic director of Kairos Italy Theater, uh, who's also kind of the mastermind of all things theatrical happening at Casa Italiana. So, um, and a true force of nature. I'm happy to sort of uh, report on, on that. I mean, I can confirm. So, and then after the panel, which is gonna last sort of, you know, 30 minutes or so, we will have a reading of The Foreigner's Mile, uh, the play by uh, Nalini. So, um, let's just uh, welcome our guests and let's get started with the conversation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Eugenio. Thank you, everybody here at Casa Italiana. We will be very fast, and so we can get them to talk and tell us more about them tonight. Uh, but I'm going to introduce again Black Italia, this series of events, book discussion, theatrical performances tonight, and next week we'll see more film screenings, lectures, sponsored by NYU Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimo in collaboration with the NYU Department of Italian Studies. And these conversations aim to promote the, the, on the intersection of race, identity, and migration in contemporary Italy, uh, are conceived in connection with courses taught here in the Department of Italian Studies. Uh, Black Italia revisits the format launched by Casa Italiana's virtual salons, these courses on Black Italia, held virtually during the pandemic, uh, by bringing together artists and scholars in order to address questions about race and racialization across Italian history, and its multifaceted diasporic geography. And tonight, as you can see, we have lots of people, lots of Italians that are really diasporic uh, Italians in different continents and different countries. And uh, I leave the floor to um, my colleague, Isabella Livorni, now to hear more about the events. Yeah, grazie, Elena. Yes, just a little bit of publicity for our the other, seri the other events in the series. Last month, was an event with uh, sociologist Anne Morning, who's here at NYU, a conversation um, about her book, An Ugly Word, Rethinking Race in Italy and the United States. Um, Tuesday, February 20th, here, there will be the screening of Elia Mutamid's film, Taliem. Then on Friday, March 29th, Uba Cristina Lifara and Simone Brioni will discuss Simone's film Oltre i Bordi, and there will be the screening of the film as well. And then on April 26th, uh, there will be a, a lecture by Janie Cole on musical encounters between the Christian kingdom of Ethiopia and early modern Europe. So those are just things to put on the calendar. Um, so I start now. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this uh, series is for a long time I had this feeling that it was Black History Month and I was 
thinking, what can we do as Italians about Black History Month? Which, as you know, is very important here in the United States. And then one year ago, almost exactly one year ago, I was talking, I met Margherita Laira, who uh, works, uh, teaches, but really works, and is another mastermind in London for everything that is Italian theater. And, um, and she was, I, I cannot express how passionate she was about the fact that, you know, there are some playwrights in Italy, the, uh, there is, you know, immigrants' playwrights or, 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 or of descent that are not, you know, that are the new Italians, uh, you know, Italians that are, uh, came uh, with the family. There is a be there are beautiful playwrights, there, are, there is beautiful artists. And she told me not only about this play, but about Performing Italy, which is a series that she curated uh, with the Italian, uh, through the Italian Cultural Institute uh, in London about, uh, uh, immigrant artist, um, and she's going to tell us so much better than me about performing in Italy. And so I, I came back and I was like, we, we, we must do that. We must show what is happening in Italy. Uh, when I was a young actress in Italy, uh, the only difference is, and it, we're, we're talking about a long time ago, very long. The only uh, difference was the, the Artists from the south of Italy and artists from the north of Italy. That was the big difference. And so I think it's beautiful and it's important to have this conversation and to discover these artists. So I first I want to start with Margherita, so if you can tell us a little bit about your work uh, and, uh, your, uh, and perform in Italy, and then we'll go to our star of the night. Does this work? Uh, yes. Um, good evening, everyone. So uh, as Laura said, we met a year ago, and I was telling her about my work. Uh, as a migrant myself, um, I am a professor of uh, theater at uh, the University of Kent. Um, of course, I'm influenced by discourses in, in the UK and in British cu culture, but also Britain is influenced by what's happening in, in the US. And of course, there's a huge, as it's uh, supposed to be, a huge interest in uh, black culture, um, that the black diaspora. So black British plays were something that you know I was very much into, and I was studying, and I'm teaching them to my students. And and then there's quite a lot of um, black and uh, African American uh, writers in London that I was exposed to. And then at some at some point, I I just thought, but where are the black Italian playwrights? And I realized I was, I didn't know enough about this. So I, I started um, researching the field and asked uh, people um, who were worked in Italy, uh, could they tell me um, who are the writers? And so I spoke to several people and most, most of them said, well, I don't think there is anybody in fact. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I, I wasn't happy with that. Uh, with that answer and I was sure that there would be quite a few and so um, um, I, I didn't bump into Nalini that way I had to dig a little bit deeper um, and um, I started collaborating with an, with an organization called Fabula Mundi uh, I also started collaborating with, a, with, a, with another festival called Souk in Genoa and we co-curated uh, a series of 15-minute um, video portraits of um, Italian theater makers uh, with a global majority or a migrant background. And those, um, those videos are online. They're available on Vimeo and on Rye Play. And they, essentially, we wanted to um, highlight uh, all the um, fantastic work that so-called new Italians are doing in Italy and, and how they're reinventing, rethinking what it means to be Italian through theater. And um, after that experience, I, I hadn't found a, um, a writer. I'd found producers, I'd found um, uh, actors, um, dancers, um, directors, 
Um, but writers, I was um, still looking for, uh, uh, and it was uh, this way that I thought I should approach Fabula Mundi to launch a call for um, uh, Italian playwrights uh, with a migration background. And, um, and uh, we launched this call and uh, we received many plays. Um, and then that's how we found uh, this play and how we got to know Nalini. Thank you. And Fabula Mundi is a very important project that is happening in Europe. It was uh, uh, created, I believe, I may be wrong, by PAV, which is an, um, an Italian uh, production, the theater, theater production. And, and it's really a network for, to exchange plays, to discover new plays by Europeans in the different countries. And so they do this important work and uh, they translate all the plays that they chose every, every year, right? Uh, so, and as you can hear, I already made so many mistakes in, in this presenting this because again, it's something that, um, and it's, it's very interesting for me. It's something that is new to me and so I'm always like struggling Italian playwright, but African descent. Uh, are they the new Italians? Yes, for me, they are the new Italians because again, I was not used. And I'm very, I'm being very honest on that. You know, it's like, I'm happy to see this kind of uh, uh, a multicultural country, finally. Uh, even though I, I don't think we still, f we feel so much a multicultural country yet but we are becoming a wonderful multicultural uh, country. Um, and now, so let me <laughs> ask <laughs> Nalini, who comes from far away, at least I thought it was very far away, the Mauritius, that we always hear about the Mauritius, you know, the beautiful islands. Yeah. From where, uh, they are not so far, I discovered. I discovered so much <laughs> about these islands, but I'm not I'm going to ask her to give us the history of the Mauritius, but more like, so you came to Italy when you were 10, yes. right? Yes. With your family. With my family, yeah. And what is interesting, and I'm sorry if I, it's mm. just, it's her mother came first. We usually think, you know, father, her mother came first and then the family. So um, how did you start writing theater? How did you discover that you wanted to write theater and what theater, that there was an urgency, there was just the beauty of theater, there was a why theater? Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's speak. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Thank you to be here. Thank you, Lara, for this uh, opportunity. Thank you, Margarita, because if it wasn't, uh, without you, nothing would be possible. I will not be here this night. And so the story is really, really long, but I will be fast to resume it. And uh, okay, I began to write for theater in the past five years. Uh, so I, uh, I, I didn't think I can write for theater. I didn't think I can write in Italian because there are so many uh, writers, so many playwrights who are good, and I always feel that I wasn't, uh, uh, I haven't the possibility, not only the possibility, but also the capability to express myself in Italian, in such a good Italian. So, uh, but at the same moment, there was, uh, I uh, approach uh, the theater, and uh, then I began to think that I Maybe I can write for theater. Maybe uh, it will not uh, go far, but uh, anyway, I can express myself through theater. So I began to uh, do some workshop with some uh, teachers who uh, teach me how to write for theater, actually. And then after, at a certain point of my uh, career, <laughs> that was not a career at all, but uh, I saw online, it was uh, during the pandemic, um, uh, the COVID pandemic, and so I was at home 
I was uh, all has everybody closed in my uh, house, and so I began. I saw the call of Margarita that Mar Margarita was speaking about uh, before, and I was uh, really impressed that they were looking for Italian of with migrant background. So I say, okay, this can be my opportunity. Why not? So I wrote the text to participate to the call. And I wrote it in three weeks, really, really rapidly, because there was a deadline. <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, there was so much I want to express in this uh, text. And so I, I say, OK, I need to do it. Even if I will not win, but I know that I have I have this all these feelings that are burning me inside, and just I just want to put them away uh, far from me on the uh, on the, on the paper on my laptop. Not in <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and uh, then I send it, and after I forgot that I send it, and then I receive, I remember the day that I receive the email that tell me that I won the call, and so I say, oh, okay, something is happening, but what is happening? And then, after all, uh, they explain me that uh, they will translate the text, and then we will have the possibility to work with uh, uh, some actors uh, to uh, test the text, and uh, this, we did it, uh, Unfortunately, on uh, online, because we were all, always on pandemic moment. And uh, after that, uh, uh, yes, we tested in English. The first time I, I listened to my text, it was in English, uh -huh. not in Italian. Uh -huh. uh, but it happened so often to me that all my texts are, trans not all, but so often my texts are translated in other languages. And the first time I listen to them, they are in other languages. It happened in English, in Spanish. So, <laughs> because uh, I don't know why, maybe because uh, my way of writing is uh, maybe more, I don't want to say international, but yeah, multi, multicultural. So it uh, speaks to a lot of uh, audience. So. And let me ask you, and then we have to yeah. wrap up. Uh, let me ask you how how easy or difficult it is to in Italy right now. You just staged this play yeah. that we are going to hear tonight in Italy. So is is it a challenge? I know that there are not many uh, artists, uh, black artists, uh, actors. There are not so many, yeah. and uh, so it is a talent, is it a challenge or how, how is it? Is it? It's hard. Yeah, it's really hard because, uh, uh, okay, uh, I uh, put it on stage with uh, uh, my di the director which, with whom I work with and uh, Alberto Cavalleri and uh, we try to find, uh, yeah, of course, uh, actors with not only backgrounds, uh, migratory backgrounds, but also that uh, feel that this history belongs also to them. Because uh, I think that this kind of story uh, began, uh, be, uh, become powerful where uh, the, uh, the artist, uh, the actors, feel uh, is connected or connected with this kind of of uh, of history of message of course yeah it's really hard because we are a small reality that don't have so much uh, pocket money to <laughs> but we are trying to do our best uh, to put it on stage because uh, we uh, also we have an, a lot of uh, response uh, uh, from the audience that are, that are really, really interesting in this kind of history, not only black audience, but also the Italian part, the, the past Italian. <laughs> now we are different Italian, but we are all yeah. Italian, I mean. Yeah.
Yeah. yeah, it's not easy. See, see, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah because I don't to like to to use white and black. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult uh, for yeah. me to express yeah. uh, this kind of. We will of feeling. find a way. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> uh, the last uh, question is: Is it uh, uh, how this display was? Well, it was received well. And by the way, Nalini was uh, one of the f finalists with another play. Uh, of the Premio Riccione, which is like the most important award in Italy for playwrights. So she has some talent, <laughs> it seems. A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, so do you see, and uh, this is for Margherita and for Nalini, do you see that there is a, a space for this kind of theater uh, talking about this? issues and this uh, you know families or everything there is there is a space do you think that there will be more and more space i think that we uh, are doing a history in italy not only me and uh, and margherita but also all the actors all the participants of uh, um, performing italy we are trying to uh, change and change is uh, take a lot of time we know but uh, we believe in this kind of change. We know that we, we, will, we will, will need to fight a lot, and we are doing it. I hope uh, that uh, also, uh, yeah, there is space, not so much. There are small realities, yeah, uh, of theater that are concerned on this kind of topics, but I think that if uh, the big one, choose, give us, uh, not only me, an opportunity, it, uh, it will make the difference. Absolutely. If you want okay. to, you want to yeah, add that? I, I completely agree. Um, there will be a space. There will be a space. Uh, when, when I read this play, I, 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 I pictured, I don't know how many years ahead, <laughs> where this play, or a play like this, or one of your plays, will be staged in a, in a very uh, important theater. And, I, and it, that day, I'm waiting for that. I hope that day comes very soon. It will. And the, the thing that I love most is these changes happening in theater. Because, you know, theater is considered the last art, the least, least important art. Instead, this change is happening in theater. And it is important because it's something that you know we experience and is live, and so is. I'm very, very happy that this change is going through theater. So, do you have any question, or we just uh, wrap up for for, and then we have, yes, no, yes. Yeah, this morning they were and on Wednesday they were kind enough to visit our classes and talk to our students who were really thrilled about the perform the, the play that they they read in Italian and in English. Uh, they had many questions, but the main point, as you'll hear, will be the question of language and linguistic contamination between among the many languages Nalini grew up with, Italian, French, uh, French Creole from the Mauritius, uh, English, Hindu, Tamil, you'll see. And they did an, an enormous effort to make all this wonderful and meaningful linguistic play translate and work in English. So, and Nalini and then Margherita, do you want to say something about all the, the way you work in your theater uh, and in your plays uh, and make and convey meanings through these words? Words are meaningful and they change everything. I mean, I use uh, uh, different languages because uh, I grew up with different languages that are all in my body, in my mind. And uh, when I express myself in Italian, I know that there is one uh, musicality, yeah? And then when I change language, there's another musicality. And so for me, there, is, um, there, are some, there are a lot of things that I can't express really well in just one language. I mean, uh, the... It's uh, because of the uh, history of uh, the island of Mauritius. Mauritius uh, was an uh, inhabitant uh, island, and then uh, first the Dutch uh, came to colonize the island. 
inhabitant island, and then of the, the French, where that uh, and they they bought uh, the slaves from Africa, and then after the French, we have also the uh, the British uh, that uh, came with all the slaves from India, and then we have also Chinese and uh, Muslim Arabic. Uh, that came for commerce, and then we have all this kind of all this culture that began to uh, live in the same little teeny space, but survive. And this is a good <laughs> situation because uh, we don't uh, we have never have a war, nothing like this, no fight, and that uh, and we grew up uh, with this uh, kind of. Uh, not only respect, but also value of the other culture, of the other language. When we, I was uh, a child in Mauritius, I grew up uh, uh, learning at school Hindi or Tamil because uh, the, it was the language uh, of my ancestor. And so uh, it was important uh, yes, to give this space for all the people uh, uh, from the uh, that have different background to give also an opportunity for the language, not only for the culture of uh, uh, food or maybe of uh, dress code, but also of language. So uh, we have a lot of, we give a lot of value to language. And we, we speak also a lot of language and we switch on and off from uh, French to Creole to Hindi to English because of this. Uh, and so when we speak, uh, it depends on what we need to express. So we use all these languages to express ourselves. I, and I think it's beautiful because there is a, a rhythm and musicality also. For me, language is, more, is, uh, is uh, my music, my own music. And so I can't uh, uh, write uh, without uh, using all this uh, in my writing. Agrita, you want to add anything? Yes, um, I just want to say this is a very, very complex play to perform. So you're going to see actors who've had very little time to come to grips with a multilingual play where the main, one of the main themes is misunderstanding, mispronunciation, broken language, not being able to say what you mean. Uh, saying something and actually it coming across completely differently. Uh, and, and the inability to code switch, the, the misunderstandings that come out of multiculturalism. And um, I, I just love the humor in the play and I love the um, coexistence of those languages and, and the opportunities that there are to explore um, how languages and cultures come together. Um, so, so this is this is the beauty of the play. But it's very very difficult <laughs> to uh, to to perform. So I, I, you'll be amazed at what they've uh, the actors being able to achieve in such little time. And uh, yes, uh, so we end now the conversation here. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? Thank you, Isabella. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Annalini. Thank you, Margherita. We're going, yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Um, we are going to say goodbye to the streaming audience. And uh, I want to thank not only Casa Italiana for the streaming service, but also all around Theater Common for the streaming service. We are very honored to be part of the platform today. Uh, and uh, we will have to set up the, the stage. So we have, uh, you have five, ten minutes to stretch, if you like. And then we go to the foreigner smile. Yes, no, we're not, no it's not ended. Sorry, yes, Eugenio. Very yes. Quickly, can I, I just would like to say something. I mean, we are particularly happy about this series because it's really meant to be in conversation not only with you guys sort of, you know, visiting us, but also with our um, classes. I mean, I think, and I would like to thank uh, Isabella and Elena who have been doing an amazing job at really thinking about this series in terms of really combining our sort of academic output with our teaching. And I think that's really part of our mission here. And I forgot to say that earlier, so I just wanted to be sure to, to say it now. 
So I'm done. It's not, it's not recorded anymore because we stopped the streaming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are witnesses. Um, after, I know we don't have a lot of time, but after the reading, if you want to ask a couple of questions to Nadine and Margarita, they're going to be here, of course. Okay, uh, you have uh, 10 minutes, five, five-ish. Five.